All right. Hey, everyone. Wolfblade coming at you with a whole new type of series here on Prereq. I'm going to show you guys some cooking stuff, some cooking tips here that you guys are going to love. Okay? So first off, in this episode, I'm going to teach you how to make some, wait for it, some Asian fried rice. Okay? And... <laughs> I, I think you're asking, why did he just hold up a box of instant rice? Well, it is like like instant rice, but we're going to flavor it up to the point where it tastes really good uh, and make it Asian-style fried rice. And uh, it's real cheap, uh, and pretty much anybody can do it. Okay, so let's get started. Um, as you can see... I have some pans sitting out, and I got my ingredients all around. Um, I think the first thing that I want to do to start off is we got my big frying pan here. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, start up what I call like the, the extras, I guess you could say. It's, the, it's like the flavoring, the seasoning type thing. Um, we're going to fry up some onion, some garlic, fresh garlic. Always got to have fresh. Um, and get that going. It, it's kind of like the extra stuff. And you want to get that going first before you start cooking the rice. Because the rice will actually cook faster than uh, the other stuff that you need to fry up. Like your onions and stuff. So we're going to get started with that first. So I got some uh, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, you can use any kind of olive oil. Uh, olive oil is, like, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be, like, the best of the best. Just as long as some olive oil. You want to coat your pan uh, with just a little bit. You don't want to, you don't need to get crazy. Something about like that. And um, that's going to coat your base so it doesn't, like, stick to your pan and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, make it so it's cookable. It's, that's what's going to cook the rice. Um and then I'm also going to add, if you look over here um, on the cutting board, I'm going to actually add just a little bit of butter on top of that. And now you're going to be like, hey, Wolfblade, why are you using olive oil and butter? That just seems really fattening and unhealthy. Well, it might be. But the butter adds a really nice flavor uh, to the rice. It adds like an extra just little uh a little like behind the scenes taste just uh, like the little aftertaste there it, it really evens things out it neutralizes everything so it, it makes it really good so i'm gonna go ahead and put the butter away there and then um i'm gonna go ahead and chop up this onion uh i like onion i i love onion i know a lot of people especially in my family don't like onion that much um, but, uh, I like onion and it really, it, you just can't have fried rice without onion, in my opinion. So as you see, I'm being really careful with the knife. And yes, I did wash my hands prior, but prior to starting here. Um, so I'll, but always be sanitary. That's the big thing. Always be sanitary. Okay. Um, you don't want to be sticking your hands and stuff into other people's food and stuff. But, uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut this onion. We're going to take out, the, take off the outside layer here. And we cut off the ends, too, because, well, that's just stuff you don't want to eat. So, and if there's one thing that you should always know about onions is that they are made of layers. Made of layers. Okay, so let's we're gonna get, go ahead and throw out this this garbage here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and chop these up. We're gonna I'm gonna slice them and dice them. Okay. Usually I use a different kind of knife for this. I probably should. Always be careful when handling knives, too. Just throwing that out there. Actually, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use a bigger knife than that. That knife's not really working it for me here. Um, 
So I'm going to get actually like a cutting knife. And that'll probably do a little bit better for me here while cutting this onion. Onions, you have to be really careful with. Um, because if the fresher, the better. But the fresher they are, they have like an aroma to them or something. Um, where... I don't know if it's the, the liquid inside or, or what it is, but it gets into the air and uh, it'll make your eyes burn. And that's why that's why you see all those like parodies and stuff and cartoons where if a character is chopping up an onion or something, they'll start crying like it's a big sad deal. And it's actually, whew, it's actually getting to me now. Um, oh yeah, my eyes are watering. I'm, my eyes are super sensitive to onion. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. It gets in the air or stuff, something, and then it just kills your eyes. It'll burn your eyes. So be careful when chopping onion. And, uh, it's almost where you want to wear goggles chopping up onion. And I like to chop it into a lot of little pieces. A lot, a lot of tiny bits here. The smaller, kind of the better, um, because it just cooks better that way. And again, you have to be careful with the knife and stuff with the onion because your eyes are burning, it's hard to see, and then you don't want to cut yourself either. So it's not really slicing and dicing, it's more like just chop up into as many little pieces as you possibly can. Get them nice and small. And there's other tools that you can use too, besides just using a knife. Um, I know that there's like special onion slicers and potato slicers and stuff like that. They'll slice and dice your stuff, you know. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Like I said, I like the taste of onion, so I don't need to chop it up so small that I'll never be able to taste it. Yeah, that's a pretty big piece there, too. Go ahead and cut that up. And I'm just going to use one onion. You can feel free to use more. If you like that, if you like a lot of onion or like that oniony taste. Okay, so we got that. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my eyes out. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and start up the heat in our frying pan. You can see that my frying pan's not exactly the best. I used it an awful lot. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on to medium heat and get that butter melting. And eventually my eyes will stop watering. Promise you. They will. Just takes a minute. And like I said, the fresher the onion, the better. So you know when you're cutting it, um, you're good to go. You know? If your eyes are burning, it's usually going to taste pretty good. Okay. So we're going to get that butter melting. We're going to go ahead and put this onion um, into the frying pan. Go ahead and get all of it off the cutting board there. And we're going to fry up the onion first uh, because the onion takes longer to cook than the other stuff to fry up. And it tastes a lot better with the uh, when the onion is cooked. Like, cooked thoroughly. Okay. And again, my eyes will stop watering here a little bit. Um, and then on top of that, I'm, I know a lot of chefs will tell you don't add the garlic right away because you don't want to burn the garlic. But uh, I like cooking the, uh, the garlic and the onion together because the garlic is fresh too. And you want the garlic to be you know cooked too. You don't want to overcook it, but you do want it to cook as well. So I'm going to go ahead. I got one... Uh, uh, one teaspoon here of garlic, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Um, that's the equivalent of, like, a clove or two or something like that. Um, and I like, I like extra garlic. I think, like, things are extra garlicky, so I'm going to go ahead and put that. I'm going to go ahead and swish this around a little bit. So it co coats the bottom of the pan. So we're going to coat the bottom of the pan there. 
And as soon as I can start seeing again. Now, the thing about the onions, there's an old legend. I don't know if it's a legend, but my mom always told me, if you don't open your mouth um, while chopping onions, then it won't get into your eyes. Like, it won't burn your eyes. I try that. It doesn't work. So I'm actually going to back down the heat a little bit. Specifically for this uh, burner, because uh, my burner doesn't work real well. And it knows on or off. That's it. So, I gotta really monitor the heat. But you should be cooking it probably on medium heat. Okay? So we're gonna get that going. Get that looking. And plus, we don't... I mean, we want the stuff to cook, but we don't need it to cook, like right away because we still got to cook our rice okay so I'm gonna go ahead and take our pan here the, just the pan like the, the regular uh, pan pan there a pot and I'm gonna get out one of my measuring cups and I usually I like to make three cups of rice at a time um, that way I, there's plenty of extra um, and I don't have to cook a lot, like, you know, extra in upcoming days. And I, I eat it for lunch and uh, dinner the next day and a couple of things. Fried rice is awesome that way. You can um, eat it pretty much whenever. You can just reheat it and stuff. And it tastes just about just as good as when you cook it initially. So, okay. Okay. I'm actually going to move this stuff over here. Go ahead and put the garlic away because we don't need that anymore. Okay. So we got that. And then for the rice, I'm going to add... Um, make sure to stir this up so it don't get fried. You can see the, the non-stick stuff came off of my pan. But we're going to go ahead and get that nice and cooking there for a little bit um but as i was saying for three cups of fried rice i usually like to add one cup of water per cup of rice so as you can see there on the cutting board uh cam i'm gonna go ahead and add my three cups of rice or three cups of water to the rice and that's just my own personal preference. Uh, other chefs and stuff will tell you differently. Uh, but I, I just do that. Because uh, eventually, you know, the rice is going to do a little boiling. And it's going to eat up the, soak up the water. And uh, so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on medium heat for now. I might back it, back it down a little bit um, once it starts cooking. Um, one of the big thing about rice, <laughs> especially uh, my good friend Chowster, who uh, likes to cook as well, he always tells me, "I can't believe you stir. Fr I can't believe you stir rice. You're never supposed to stir rice." Everybody's got this big Oriental tradition when it comes to rice, and you can never go wrong with rice. You just you just can't, you know. Um, but yeah, I I I'm like you got to stir it to get all the water up, but. Uh, yeah, it's just personal preference. Okay, this is still this is still cooking. This is still cooking. So we're going to go ahead and leave that be. And the rice is going to cook as it's doing that. Uh, it's a good thing. Um, good time to put away a couple things. I like to put away and clean up as I go. Uh, that's just me. Um, now, I for fried rice... Uh, you always want to add vegetables and stuff into it, too. That, I mean, it, it really brings out uh, the taste and uh, different things like that. I usually like to use fresh vegetables, and I'll clean them and cook them and stuff like that. But since I kind of want to do this, showing that like you can do it on a budget, um, a, just a regular bag, like you see there in the, in the cam there, a uh, regular bag of uh, frozen vegetables works just as fine. It works just as fine. And we can go ahead and thaw that out. Um, thaw that out as well. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put that in a bowl and run some hot water into the bowl and get that kind of melting. And 
And you know, no one says you have to use the whole bag either. It just depends on your preference. That's what's awesome about fried rice is that it's all a matter of preference. Okay. Uh, you can make it pretty much any way you want. It's completely reverse, you know, versatile, you know. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab another bowl from up in here. Um, and along with vegetables, fried rice, you usually want to have some kind of meat that goes into it. Okay. Um, you can have like steak, uh, chicken. Uh, I personally like shrimp. I'm a huge seafood fan. Um, I can't get enough of seafood and I'm just a huge fan of shrimp. So I always like to use shrimp. Again, it comes down to your taste. I've also cooked with beef. Um, heck, if you're on a budget, you can even chop up a hot dog and put it in rice, and it would still taste good. Okay. Um, but I like shrimp, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, thaw out some shrimp. Again, um, it's this shrimp here is uh, pre-cooked already, and it only has the tails, so there's no shells or anything like that on them. Um and again, if you're on a budget, you don't have to do the shrimp. Shrimp is actually expensive right now, but I, I like shrimp, so I went ahead and uh, went for the extra cost. So I'll go ahead and put that there. Uh, just put, you know, you don't have to put a lot of shrimp or uh, of any kind of meat. You don't want to over flood the rice with meat or anything. The thing about fried rice is uh, you want to have a nice even balance of every ingredient, okay? Uh, okay, this is starting to get kind of thawed. Okay. It's kind of thawed. I'll go ahead and set that there. And then I'm going to go ahead and run some hot, not hot water. You actually want to use cold water um, when thawing shrimp out. Uh, because if you use hot water, it just kind of, they kind of dilapidate, sort of. And it's like the same kind of shrimp that you would use for like shrimp cocktail and stuff like that. Um, you just... You thaw it out with cold water, let it melt out for a little bit, and you'll be good. So this is starting to cook really well. You can see on the non-stick part that it's kind of getting a bit brown there. But you can see as it's browning, that means, you know, it's getting getting there. It's getting cooked. And it's, you know, the, the butter and the, the uh, olive oil and everything, that's what's cooking it. And, um... Another big part of fried rice is the egg. Okay, we're going to put some egg in there too. Um, where you can, when you can put the egg into the mixture is, it's up to you. Um, I might put, go ahead and throw an egg in right here, right now. I've been doing that a lot lately. I usually used to wait until I put the rice in and I was frying the rice up and then mix in the egg. You can do that too. That, it doesn't matter. But I like this because uh, the liquid egg will, like, kind of mix in and merge with the rice. So, it, I mean, you still get the taste of egg, but uh, I like to have it more fried up and stirred in instead of just kind of mixed in, if that makes any sense. Um, and again, I like to use one egg per cup of rice, uh, but... Again, I'm a huge egg lover, and I kind of like having... The egg kind of dries it. An egg is kind of like dried. They sit, uh, depending on what you're doing, usually sometimes, like if you're baking, it's um, like a liquid, and it will, um, you know, liquefy the mixture. Uh, but in this case, I feel like it's more of a dry thing. I could be wrong. But I'm going to go ahead and put in... Uh, I said one egg per cup of rice. We were making three. So normally I would put in three eggs. I might put in a fourth one just because I like egg. And it's nice because, you know, it's frying up right now. The eggs are going to get fried up. Um, and that way it's going to be ready for when we put in the rice. And then that way we would only have to put in the vegetables, uh, the shrimp, and the seasonings. So we'll go ahead and let that cook. Let that fry up for a little bit. So it did kind of water it down a little bit. 
Um, you see it's not sizzling as high, so I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of heat, just a little bit, uh, to kind of crank that up and get that egg cooking. Um, you don't ever want to eat not cooked egg, non-cooked egg, because um, salmonella and it, it just can, it can make you sick and stuff. So you always want to make sure that your egg is fully cooked uh, while you're cooking it. Um, because you don't want to get sick. And the same thing with, like, if, if you're using any kind of, like, meat or uh, anything like that, uh, always make sure everything's cooked thoroughly. Uh, you don't want to be getting sick on not cooked stuff. Raw raw food will get you like that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check out the shrimp that we have right here. Okay, it's still a little frozen. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more, a little bit warmer water to it. Again, you're usually supposed to use cold, but I'm going to go ahead and use warmer to get it cooked, thawed out here fairly quickly. Um, our veggies are kind of thawed out. Again, you can use fresh, but uh, again, you can use fresh, but if you're on a budget and you just want a quick meal, uh, frozen veggies are the way to go. So go ahead and mix this up here, get it all chopped up nice. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. So when we put in the rice to fry it, uh, it'll mix up real nice like that with this kind of low concoction that we have. Okay, so it looks like that the rice is boiling here. I'm right-handed, so I got to have the handle on the right side so I can hold on to it here. Or that's a left anyway. But I'm right-handed, so I have to use the spoon in my right hand. Okay. That looks like it is pretty good to go. Our rice has been cooked. It's been boiled. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that burner off. It, it, yeah, there's a little bit of water in there still, but that okay. that's okay. The rice will soak it up. Okay. Um, so while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and I like, I mean, what, since I'm using shrimp, I'm going to go ahead and take the tails off of these things, uh, just so you guys can see what I'm doing here on the cam. Uh, I'm just going to put the tails on the plate here and stick them in this bowl and get our shrimp ready. And um, it doesn't matter, like there's different sizes of shrimp that you can buy. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, per se, what size you do. Shrimp will always shrink when you either grill it or fry it or cook it or anything. So it all just depends. Let's see. Just, make, just go ahead and stir this real quick. Uh, and to get rice proper, it's usually a lot of multitasking. A lot of multitasking. But, uh, you, know, you, you know, you get it eventually. And I've had some pretty bad uh, concoctions of fried rice. I've had some pretty bad servings of fried rice. <laughs> um, can't have fried rice perfect every time. But it is. It, but it came more down to the seasonings than anything. I accidentally went a little crazy on the seasonings. So, um, and I will show you exactly how I normally do the seasonings and stuff. Um, that way, you know, you don't have to worry about going overboard or too much or too little or stuff like that. So go ahead and we're going to stir this up. You don't want to, like, really leave it on the heat too much when there's no water on this because it'll start sticking to the pan and or the pot and everything else in your rice. Okay, so we're pretty good to go here. I'm going to go ahead and put the rice into our frying pan. Listen to that sizzle. And it still kind of sticks to the pan a little bit. Um, but you're, you know, you're not going to get every grain of rice out of the pan. But try to get as much as you can. Yeah, this will be okay. This will be good. Okay. And like I said, I normally like to clean as I go. So go ahead, stir that up a little bit. Get it kind of all mixed in together. 
because we're going to be stirring this thing a lot. Okay. So at this point here, you don't want, since everything is pretty much going dry at this point, we're going to go ahead and add the soy sauce. Um, I always recommend using soy sauce. I've also used teriyaki if you like a sweeter flavor uh, uh, of rice. Uh, either works. But we're going to go ahead and put in a little bit of soy sauce. Uh, I usually just eye it. Um, I don't know exact measurements and stuff. Uh, usually you want to just add enough for color uh, for the most part. But soy sauce does have a nice flavor to it. Um, when it comes to... It, it, it's basically liquidized sodium. So you really don't need to add too much salt uh, when we're adding in our uh, seasonings. Uh, but it also adds a, like a liquid type of thing, so it doesn't. Your concoction won't, won't burn. Your mixture won't burn. Um, you know, while cooking, because the drier it is, it will burn, and then it just won't go well. So, but you don't want to also make it like water watered down either. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead. And I'm going to go ahead and start adding in our veggies and our shrimp. And then we're going to add the seasonings. So we'll go ahead. I opened up the veggies here. And they're still a little frozen. Um, that's not terrible. Uh, I don't like them when they're like overly frozen because it does water down the rice slightly. And it makes it so you have to cook it longer. And it's still, by the time it's done, it's a little liquefied. Not as dry as I normally like. So we'll go ahead and add about half the bag there. <clears throat> about half the bag. And we'll go ahead and put that away so we can refreeze. Because like I say, it wasn't completely thawed out. But, uh, you know. And if it's not completely thawed out, it's fine. The ice will melt, because ice is just water. Um, and it'll mix with the rice, and it make it so it doesn't, like, burn. You know, it, it more liquid into the thing. Some people like a little bit more, uh, I guess it's soupy rice, in a way. But, uh, it, you know, it's your personal preference. If you wanted to thaw it all the entire way, that works too. That's actually the best way to do it. If you're kind of in a rush and you're just kind of going, um, either way works. Uh, just got to cook it a little bit longer so it's not as liquidy. It'll The water will evaporate eventually. And I'm actually going to uh, turn up the heat on this a little bit so we can get it going. We're actually going to fry up this rice. Okay, so we're not just at a constant little low heat. Uh, we're going to do fry up that rice. Okay, so I got my shrimps here. Let that, let, I'm going to let it warm up a little bit here. Get it warmed up. And I hope you guys excuse me. I'm going to get a little bit to drink because my throat is a little dry. Since my watering container is on the other side of the setup. Okay. Much better. Okay. So let's fry this bad boy up. So again, you don't need it too, too hot, but you do want to fry this. You want to fry the rice. You do want to get it fried. Right now, my uh, thing is a little bit above medium heat on normal ovens or stoves. Um, oh, shoot. And, you know, sometimes you do get a little messy with stuff, but that's why you clean as you go. Okay. But you do want to get this fried. Be 
because, like I said, the, the ice kind of made it a little bit more liquid down. You can see where it's kind of sticking to my nonstick. That's why I'm kind of trying to avoid the middle. When you're working with a pan that actually has the stick stuff, um, you're good to go. You don't need to keep making it around the sides here like how I've been doing. So now I'm going to add the shrimps. And we're going to get those uh, fried up. And I'm using them, I'm using the center, uh, as genius as it is, since the center is the hottest without the stick stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the center to get these things fried. Fried up. And you can also, if you want to, um, add the shrimp uh, prior when you're uh, doing your onion and your garlic and your egg. You can fry up the shrimp then too. And that's probably the better solution. Um, the other thing that you can do as well is... I know a lot of people nowadays like to use microwaves. Um, microwaving the shrimp is actually not a terrible idea. Uh, get it nice and cooked. Because the shrimp holds water. And when it gets cooked, um, the water comes out. So... Uh, you can actually extract that water and dump it out before putting it in your frying pan and mixing it in with your rice. Uh, that way, again, less liquid in the rice. Uh, you want a little bit so it doesn't burn, but you don't really want to like make soupy rice. But we're just kind of doing it this way to do it. And like I said, the more cooked the shrimp is, the better. So I'm going to try to get this cooked up here. Um, and there's, you know, there's other ways that you can grill or cook shrimp and stuff. You can fry it up, you can grill it, you can... Again, shrimp is one of those versatile things. Everything about this meal right here... And this meal is very hearty too. It will fill you up and you will have a plenty, plenty of extra... Um, Probably for the dinner that night, lunch the next day, and probably the dinner the next night. You know, you'll probably eat about one cup of rice per meal uh, per person. So we're going to go ahead, let this go ahead and fry up. Um, while we're doing that, uh, like I said, I like to clean up as I go. Um, no use in wasting time, per se. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and... Uh, always, you know, uh, always stay sanitary. Always do that kind of thing. Um, get a little bit of soap on this. And wash up these bowls. I'm going to wash up that pot that the rice was in real quick. And uh, this kind of wash as you go. Uh, I utilize, uh, you know, a few more dishes than what is kind of necessary. Uh, you can back down the dishes, but just for convenience sake, I used a couple extra bowls and stuff. And like I said, we gotta let that we gotta let the shrimp cook anyway. So uh, it's a good time to go ahead and just start cleaning up a little bit while that's cooking. And I got a lot of dishes over here on this side of the sink. <laughs> I need to put those away. Okay. So we're looking pretty good here. Okay. And again, I got to do that pot, but we'll worry about that here in a minute. Let's stir the shrimp in the concoction. I always use the word concoction. I don't know. Yeah. See how it's kind of starting to stick. I don't really like it. If you had a non-stick pan, um, you don't get that as bad. Um, I try to get it to not stick as much as I can, but hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? This is the best frying pan that I've had in a while. So we're gonna go ahead, and once it starts to get to this point, uh, you can back down the heat a little bit. Get it back down a little bit. Um, to get this clean, all you gotta do is soak it. it sticking right now, but as soon as you put like soap and water to it, it it'll be fine. 
So we're gonna go ahead, stir this up. Um, now we're at the point where I'm gonna add the little bit of seasonings, okay? So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. We don't need a lot um, because the soy sauce adds the extra sodium. Uh, I add a little bit of pepper. I like pepper, I like spice. Um, but more so it just kind of gives it that flavoring. Uh, and you can, you can add whatever spices you like to it too, okay? It, it, there's no really set in stone how you do it. This is just how I do it, per se. You can see how my nonstick is really doing a good job there. Um, but now for my secret ingredient that I always put in fried rice and I do a lot of cooking with. Um, it's actually ginger powder. Uh, ginger powder is kind of hard to find. Uh, only a few select stores actually have some. I always look for it when I'm in grocery stores and stuff. Um, I just give it a couple... You know, I just give it a little bit of powder. You don't want to go nuts with the ginger um, because it is a little spicy, but it will way overbear the rice. Um, what the ginger does is the rice will have like a tangy taste, but like when you taste it, it will like, it'll almost taste like something's missing. Like something just, something seems off, uh, a little empty taste. I feel like it adds a, like a little bit of background flavor to it, if you will. Um, like your paint, think of it as like a picture. Um, you you know you got you got it just adds the background to the picture. So like a backdrop or something. Uh, if you're thinking of tastes in the form of art, in a way to put it. Okay, so this is starting to look really good. It's starting to get really fried up. Um, starting to brown up a little bit, which is what I wanted it to do. That's how it's getting fried. Uh, the shrimps could be cooked a little bit more. Um, once you get to a certain point in time where it's sitting on the stove, uh, you know, too long, you just have to kind of go with it. Um, they might, they weren't as cooked as I would wanted them to, but, uh, you know, we're starting to get dry on our stuff again, and I don't want to add more liquid to it. Uh, because we're getting to the point where it's going to be done. Rice kind of gets done on its own. Alright, that looks good. That looks good. So I'm going to turn off the heat. And I'm going to take it off the burner. Uh, <clears throat> and that, that looks pretty good. Uh, so, that's pretty much the concoction. Let me, let me, I want to take a quick, quick taste to see if anything was missing. Okay, it's still a little hot. It's hard to kind of hard to taste it, but um, that tastes it, it tastes pretty good. It tastes pretty good. That should be good. Uh, I think I pretty much explained how I normally do it on a normal thing. Um, if if something is missing, like it tastes like you there's not enough sodium in there, like enough salt or anything, add a little bit more soy sauce. Um, if you can't eat a lot of salt or anything like that, um. Let it, and like people like and you're serving it to people, let them add the salt shaker to it. Um, like I said, rice is real versatile. Uh, you can make it so many different ways that people can enjoy it. Uh, you can add whatever kind of veggies. Like I said, we just did the mixed veggies. There's um, green beans, peas, corn, carrots. I think that's what was in that mixed veggies. Um, you can. I I usually sometimes do snow peas, uh, some chopped up mushrooms, zucchini. Uh, you can use broccoli, uh, you, you pretty much anything, uh, that you would do, even like for stir fry or anything like that. You can use just a bag of stir fry vegetables. Uh, you can use peppers, uh, pretty much anything. Uh, so, but, uh, I think that's good. Um, again, you can use this as kind of like a base and, uh, make your own with whatever ingredients you like. Uh, basically, to get basic fried rice, all you need is the rice itself, um, the olive oil to cook it, and uh, a little bit of egg and some soy sauce. Those are your very, very basic ingredients. And anything else, you can kind of just throw in as you enjoy. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit. 
Um, and I hope you try it out because this is delicious. So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of Prereq um, and other cooking videos that I'm going to be uh, attempting to do in the near future. And as always, this is Wolfblade signing out.